who do we have in Group Z? We have Tais, uh, Xixo, and Kalman going to be playing in the last matches today. So the first one will be, of course, the winner's match. And then whoever loses this one will end up facing off against Sixo, who already beat Penny in Group D earlier today. Hey, what happened to Penny? It's gone. It's actually yeah, she, she's gone. Yeah, she, she didn't get revenge. Yeah, she didn't get revenge on Tice or, or Sixo, unfortunately. So, so a thought uh, for Penny? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually really sad that Penny got eliminated because I <laughs> I did talk to her and she wanted to to play versus size. She wanted to play versus six, so yep. and she did get that dream fulfilled. But unfortunately, she got eliminated. But hopefully, we'll see more uh, more of Penny in the future. She did go through the Swiss format on day one, so a pretty yep. good achievement. Yeah, with a really impressive run. I think she yeah, it was really good. But with the first match, it's going to be Tice versus Camelon though, so it's going to be pretty interesting. Everyone knows Tice. Yeah. Uh, obviously, one of the G2 members of the uh, and the life coach is still in. Unfortunately, I didn't yep. got knocked Top out. Eight. Uh, so the return champion won't be here to, uh, to take this take this uh, cup again. But Cameron's a really good player, actually. That not a lot of people have heard of. I cast him in the WCA uh, European qualifier, right. and he took some very interesting decks as well. I don't know if that's still gonna stick and whether he's still playing sort of funky decks. But I remember he took like a Mech Druid. Mech Druid. Yeah, or at least like a half Mech Druid. Uh, to the tournament, and he, he performed really well. He qualified, so. Well, it's definitely worth mentioning that uh, his team, Flo, uh, they had three players in the top 16. Johnny Stone uh, eliminated, and two beers eliminated, unfortunately. But Camden is still there and then trying to represent the team. And Johnny Stone brought this weird mage deck that uh, we've seen, which was like a Reno a removal. You know, freeze-ish, yeah. grinder mage. I like. I don't even. That's know really going. catchy name. Uh, I like it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Reno freezes grinder mage. It's, it's got this rolls sense. off the tongue <laughs> like a heavy metal <laughs> bag. <laughs> Oh. Absolutely. So uh, he's going to, he won versus Sixo, and right now he's yeah. going to face Thais, the, the previous European champion. Yep. I want to say previous, yeah, we could say that. But I mean, he, he came really close to getting um, basically the world championship, right? Very, very close to getting to that spot. Unfortunately for him, didn't do it. He's been very consistent. I think I put him at the top of the players, the, you know, competence level across the board, across all Hearthstone players. He's definitely up there in the, like, the top five. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, mean, I was selecting ties for a, a top player of February, and in February itself, he had 84 plus percent win rates in the streamed uh, tournaments. So uh, his performance in February was just amazing. And right now, March, he's already going for the Swiss. Uh, he's here uh, winning his first match. So one match away from advancing to day three. Yep, so it looks like uh, Tice is running what I would like to call the single most standard lineup ever. We've got Druid, Paladin, Warlock, which right now I think are the three classes that we would rate uh, as a whole as the top one. Yeah, the, the, the general idea, yeah, that these are just the three overall. Maybe Warrior can is, is like a close fourth, I right. guess, for that one. And uh, and Cameron is running Druid, so I'm kind of interested if there's any mechs in this deck. <laughs> uh, it'll be really cool, but I imagine be because the state of Druid at the moment, like mid-range Druid is just so powerful, but it's going to be Tice's Druid that we open with versus what appears to be, at least at the moment, Zoo. Zoo. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A the, very the aggressive list. Uh, there are some lists that run, you know, the double Lepronomes as well. Yep. Trying to be on the very aggressive side, and in that, I guess in that deck, Leroy also has a good spot. Uh, but it's it's seen everywhere, right? Like it's that Doom Guard substitute that has no penalty and also works with Sea Giants. And everything yeah, else. and I really like um, that Leroy sort of disappeared a little bit after it got nerfed into like the, the five mana territory from four. Right. And um, but it's been there. It's, it's returning to, to quite a few decks now. We've seen like combo variants of Warlock, uh, Zoo lists um, as well, like just as the extra burst, even which on its own or just with a power overwhelming. So pretty good to see it make an appearance again. Yeah, I'm really happy that we Leroy is back, uh, not only because it's uh, a great character or like a person from World of Warcraft and everybody was shouting Leroy Jenkins, but the fact that we were shouting it for, for a year almost uh, previously before he got nerfed, yep. you can do it again. Yeah, it's good. I like to see it. But looking at Tice's opening. I mean, I feel like the opening from uh from Kalman was a little bit Kalman was a bit weird because I expected there to be an immediate coin juggler to force a wrath and no wild growth onto, uh, but he opted to play the Void Walker as a standalone, which is very low pressure. Lets the Druid develop what he wants, plays better around, say, Innervate, Keeper of the Grove. But that's about the you know the one thing you dodge. It seems like he's going for the Imp Gang Boss, so he won't li uh, he would like to. Um Coin out in Gangbos, but there is one card that's really yeah. weird in Zudek, what, Raven. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, Belcher? It's very, very strange. And you know what? Of, of, all, of all the players, this just doesn't surprise me that much from Camelot, actually, because the last time I cast him, he brought a really odd Druid deck. 
and he makes it work somehow. So he's one of these very few players, actually, I believe, that can make like completely their own version of the deck, you know, really like weird card choices, but actually make it work. And you know, he's gotten this far, so I, uh, I have no doubt he's going to get some success. But this kind of opens up to what this Warlock can be. It might edge towards a more mid-range Warlock, or is it just Zoo with Belch's tech in maybe to beat other Zoo decks, you know, have a better matchup versus those? It's going to be interesting to see how this progresses, because at the moment, it does look very standard minus that right. Belcher. Yeah, overall, I think well, uh, we can agree that, wow, Thoris. <laughs> <laughs> we can, I wanted to say we can agree that this Zoo has a good matchup, but then we see Thoris, and it doesn't change anything, actually. Yeah, I mean, it really, the, the thing I want to I wanna maybe look at is Zeus' follow-up, and the reason why he didn't play Juggler. It's obviously trying to play some kind of implosion turn uh, at some point in the near future. What I was thinking is maybe he wanted to go turn three with Juggler, Coin, uh, Peddler, something along those lines, but ended up playing the Peddler with the Coin. So that means the implosion is going to be delayed. The Emperor Thorsen will get maximum value, and Gang Boss comes out to replace the 3 2 and the 2 2. Uh, but that really is like super low pressure. Yeah. yeah, and what this Emperor does, although it doesn't really have a huge impact on his next turn, unless he draws like a Living Roots or something, it has a massive impact on the turn after that. Turn six, Dr. Boom, definitely feels good. And when Tice has just dropped an Emperor after Camlin did his turn two, like he's got to be a little bit upset about that and has to really focus on coming back into this Let's game. The find second Peddler's going to help though. And there we go, Power of Whelming was found. So he's going to be able to keep a two, two and a three, two. Yeah, Power of Whelming is a really good answer here. And that second Peddler, again, like these two Peddlers have put, gave him the Flame Imp to drop down to continue the pressure and then straight onto the PO to be able to deal with that. I'm thinking, Emperor, whilst keeping enough minions on the board. I'm thinking, is there a way maybe, the, uh, now, now there's Ancient of Lore, but I was thinking if uh, maybe Tice can run out of cards so Zoo still had card advantage and uh, some board presence. So it would be possible for the Zoo to be maybe just grind the Druid down. And this is what Zoo sometimes does, just use some of the minions to clean the board and then the, the rest of the minions to deal a bit of damage. Right. But now with Ancient of Lore, uh, Tice will have some more drawing options open here. Yeah, and I think that actual, that um, really quick start from Tice, if, it, if he like uh, innovated out any other card that wasn't Emperor, he easily could have had that problem because sure. it would have still like if he if he didn't have Emperor innovated out Druid of the Claw, it still would have died to the PO, right? Yeah. So then you know then you start to have a bit of uh, more problems, but because it was the reduction from the Emperor and he has follow ups like Boom and as you said, Nymph straight into Ancient of Law, he has so many more options. Even just a Shredder for later on is going to be good. See, like the decision here to trade away the Peddler early on with the PO instead of the Voidwalker just shows that um, it would have given Kalman a bit more protection just because he's able to protect the 1-1s from a hero power play. One of the things, though, is that the 1-1s that um, Kelman has on the board really dilute the value of these Boombas. Yeah, well, Voidwalker can still be useful because Dr. Boom is a 7 uh, attack creature, but uh, if there is a ton in the way, he will need to, he will need to attack into that. Yeah, and, and g given the option for the Druid to have to deal with a Voidwalker, um, even after Emperor on turn seven, when they normally do want to drop Ancient of Law, although you know one of the other cards is Boom that he's already seen, is really good because it just messes with the Druid's mana, which is one of the best ways to beat them actually. Make them play slightly off curve, and it really uh, does, uh, doesn't help them out whatsoever. But I'm going to be interested to see if Cameron plays this Sludge Belcher, and even more interested to see Tice's face I think, when the Sludge uh, Belcher comes down. This turn is probably just attack with the one ones uh, into the bombs and then after that when the bombs are already resolved play maybe juggler and him gang boss if you just play the sludge belcher you just give sludge belcher away for free and uh, it, you give a good attack to dr yeah. yeah one of the imps dies but that is probably acceptable i mean the belcher is still a massive roadblock if you play the juggler you're trying to be more aggressive you haven't seen swipe you saw the dr boom which makes sense obviously uh, there doesn't mean there's no swipe but it is still a very high pressure turn for uh, for Kamlan. So now with uh, Savage Roar, there is an option also to clear the, the Voidwalker. He, he had the possibility to maybe just charge the 4-4 four, four for 5 mana, and then just, uh, well, Hero Power would not do much. So I actually like Judo the Claw Savage Roar, because you can actually clear up uh, three minions off this board if you want, or deal nine to face I'll just and take kill the damage, yeah, yeah. Right, like you, you, you kill the one, two with your face, let's say. And yeah. You can trade up a little bit with the... Uh, I think one of the interesting points here as well is that if you look at Tice's health, he's on an 18. There's an okay amount of power on Camlin's side of the board and Leroy, so if he draws into like a PO as well, that's going to be a lot of damage out of nowhere. Yeah, really going to be interesting to see if Tice uses Druid of the Taunt or Charge here. Well, obviously he can also just you go for Ancient of Lore. Right. Yeah, 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 you want to talk about getting board presence, you've got a Savage Roar in hand with Druid of the Claw. Maybe all you want to do is get bodies on the board. Uh, he doesn't know there's a Belcher. Yeah. yeah. And he does know there is a Leroy. 
Yeah, I think Leroy's one of the, <laughs> Leroy's one of the cards you're going to expect, but I think the problem with the Ancient of Lore is he might want to wait one more turn to see if he needs to use it to heal or draw. Yeah, I really like it. it, it if he, if the, he comes under a lot of pressure this turn and say the, the Druid of the Claw is silenced and then there's some more, like, uh, you know, which is more board control and more uh, damage represented, then he might actually need to use the Ancient of Lore to heal, but sitting on 18 at the time before the attack from the Savage Droid probably felt safe-ish. Yeah, definitely. Well, looks like Leroy found a perfect friend. Like a 4-6? That's 4-6, yeah. I mean, I'd be surprised to see anything else be done here by okay, I'm on Tapping means you restrict every single follow-up option. Playing Belcher is a sacrificial play for the most part. Yeah, I think what's good as well is the, uh, the Leroy into Voidwalker almost dim like guarantees the Druid is going to hero power next turn to run the two Dragonlings in. Yep. But it, he'll, it, you can make an imp. Yeah, that's true. He can just clear them. But uh, if he uses hero power, then he's only going to have six mana available, which you've already seen Emperor, so there are no great six mana turns from Druid in terms of singular drops. He could just trade with them, of course, and just make it even more likely that the Dr. Boom has to go in, which is still fine. He's still... Um, I suppose trading is actually better because... Wait, I think it's great, actually. Leroy. I would trade with maybe one. You don't have to trade with the other, but it really depends uh, on whether or not you, you're afraid of second roar giving that one one extra trading potential. Yeah, I think it was amazing because you've just seen uh, Roar being used and yep. uh, Dr. Boom attacking the, one of the Void Walkers. So uh, at, the, at this very moment, Dr. Boom is stopped by the one free taunt. <laughs> There's no way to go. Unbelievable. This Dr. Boom hasn't even hit anything worthwhile yet. It's so funny. Yeah. You there's Life Coach Dr. Dr. Booms and there's Ty's Dr. Booms. <laughs> so now what do you do? Like, um, you, you, you will be able to kill the one free. Uh, do you ever go for draw and try to uh, draw something like an Innervate maybe, but it won't Living help Roots you. maybe. Yeah, Living Roots to deal with it. You probably... I mean, there's five on the board. You have 13. Uh, you would need to see the second PO to get completely blown out. Uh, and even then, there still needs to be more damage found. So Ancient of Lore could be played. If you want, for board presence sake. Yeah, I think I actually like this. Yeah, as well. exactly. For board presence sake, you would play two minions and a hero power play. Yeah. Heals you a little bit. This is one good board for Tice, and uh, he's still healthy on 14. It's not like he's playing versus Druid with combo in hand. Well, I think he's just, he's seen the Leroy as well, right? So yeah. you're not expecting big burst out of anywhere. And here's another interesting card as well, like Shredder. Not the most common card seen in. Uh, what I like about this two. line is that, you know, Tice going for the board means. I, I, number one, I want to get this board, and if I get it, and I'm low on health because it chooses to go all in, I always have the Ancient of Lore as a backup plan. Yep. So this board will not only, you know, take advantage of what the opponent has, but I'll also be able to win off of it just by healing myself. Uh, do you tap here? I, I think I like tapping in a way. I don't know exactly what he has in deck, but uh, the cards I see in hand are not the best. So if you tap, you can. It, it, if you don't get the buff, you can still go for. Whoa! Sure. Okay. There is a buff. This is. This might be big can kill Dr. Boom and still develop a uh, pilot to Shredder. Yeah, I think that's okay. That seems fine. Yeah, I think you just you just run the 2-2 two -two in, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, it might be... Like, it doesn't I mean, matter. You, you don't die to Roar, right? So, do you... You've seen one Roar as well, so you should be you fine. You could play Lepronome and Shredder just to min-max the amount of damage that yeah, Lepronome gives you. Yeah, and just kill him next turn. Right, exactly. Yeah. Just go all in. You're, you're likely to get at least an Imp. Or a two drop from the Shredder. Yeah. And the Lapinome's got almost, well, pretty much guaranteed two damage as well, right? Because right. he's going to die at some point. And then yeah. Wrath, Wrath pickup from Tice means he can actually either use it to cycle and go onto the Lepinome, uh, so it's one less minion to trade with, or he can use it to just straight up kill off the uh, in gang boss, for example, or pop the Shredder. It seems, like, seems like Tice is still in a good position overall because he has Ancient of Blur, so he, is, he can get like six health or five health and remove a minion off the board. We'll yeah. have to see what happens, though, because if these trades end up a little clunky for Tice. Yeah, and the problem as well is if he heals, then he's top decking every single game, uh, every single turn, sorry. And Sylvanas is OK, but can just be ignored at this point, actually, for, for Camelon, um if it comes down. Or even yeah. if it comes down next turn, you can just ignore it. So I think he almost has to heal this turn, even with the trades, because you just don't know what's going to come out from the So wall. what are the best trades? Like, uh, attacking to the 2 free with uh, Pilot to Shredder looks I mean, you can't good. even kill everything. Yeah, no you, can't, you can't kill the Shredder. Do you actually just, do you actually just leave the shredder up then? Yeah, I think so. Like what, it's the what one you just it's, it's so awkward, and the drop from the shredder could be even be more terrible. If you're attacking theme gang boss, this is fine. You probably need to go face with Doctor Boom because it's too much damage. Yeah, I agree. Just like killing a one one imp. Boom finally. So gets four to go more face. damage needed there. Boom for count. Like, he needs to find four more, otherwise this game could slip away at any moment. The Belcher might be able to stall a bit longer, so there is that. Do you tap? 
Still? I think so, yeah. I think so because you can still play Lepino. Whoa. Hi. I'm, oh, Asher Drake. I'm a zoo deck. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I, no, I think no. I misstepped. I, I'm like, when I see Asher Drake, I, I'm thinking Dark Bomb. Like he had Leroy in hand. I yeah. like that. It makes sense in, the, in a list like this one. I've seen quite a few uh, Zula's very aggressive ones with Lepernos also playing the Dark Bomb. Some even playing Soulfire for Hell's sake. Interesting. Well, so this turn you probably just go for Belcher, Lepernome, and... Probably a trade on the 2-1. Do you, do you kill the Dr. Boom or do you kill the 4-1? You might kill kill the, you'll kill the Dr. Boom, I, I imagine, yeah. I was going to say, do you actually kill one of, like, uh, yeah, Boom on the 5-5, I guess? Boom's just straight Now you right. kill on 2-1. Yep. But this does make, uh, it, this this slows down the clock. They're trying to put the Druid on so much. I think what's good here is though, um, if he doesn't have a Living Roots or a Wrath, then this shred, is this shred is gonna die. Yeah, I'll keep it. This Shred is gonna die to the to the one, two, if he chooses to attack in. So he's gonna be like the first half of the Shredder ahead. Does what he have to play Sylvanas now? Well, Sylvanas might still be good, right? Especially because Azure Drake on next turn. It's probably like better mana management like yeah. well, the, well the problem is he can't as your drake and swipe anymore right um so because he obviously just drew drake with the uh hard growth i'm surprised he went for the drake there one of the yeah, worst draws he could have found in the spot like <laughs> this one yeah that, he can't do anything with this innervate wow so uh, actually shredder do you pop your own shredder i, I imagine I you have to do one charge nope <laughs> if only <laughs> battle cry is triggered for if the shredder draw only <laughs> So 10 more damage needed there for Calamite. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about. Like, there's almost no way for uh, for good trades to be found. But this Drake is surprisingly good. You don't have to tap, and you're still going to be able to draw. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how good is Juggler here? You can get these three Juggles from the Shredder drop, from Azure Drake, and from the left. Yeah, I think I think you actually play the... Do you play the Juggler and attack him with the Shredder first? Into the 4-4. Yeah, into the 4-4, because you don't want any Juggles to hit the 4-4, right? So you play the juggler, attack him first, then Drake, then uh, And you hope for a 2-1 charge, Murloc. Why not? Oh, might as yeah, well. Yeah. We might, or you know what? Even a Vitality Totem. I'll take you got to play to your outs, right? A few free taps. Yeah. An Oyotron. Let's do it. Vitality Totem or... or it is attacking, and the we'll Shredder go. is going to drop. Oh, kill me. Oh, that was the knife he wanted. And he, yeah, and he gets the juggler. So he has two chances to hit the 5-1 now. Another Drake. Wow, this late oh, game. Oh, wow. unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, this was this was so good for Kamelon. Now, now this knife doesn't even matter. Well, why oh. not face? Yeah, that was it. That was actually the perfect set of knives. And that's a blank. So at the moment, Tyus can't cannot do anything. Like he can kill Juggler. Uh, Sylvanas, so arm like hero power, innervate, play the BGH, kill the, the Juggler. Like he can do a few things, but you're not gonna be able to win the game unless the uh, the zoo player blanks. Yeah, Sylvanas is still okay-ish. Right. But uh, if Kamelon deals with Sylvanas. He still has a draw of Azure Drake. Yeah, and that's the key, actually. The, the, the additional draw without having to live tap is huge because it just keeps him at a relatively safe health. Camlin is like, I'm at 14 health. Am I dead? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How dead am I right now? No <laughs> idea what's coming. There's a druid, in fact. Right. That would have been, so, been so sick BM as well. He kills the juggler because it <laughs> has combo anyway. <laughs> oh, the tilt. Well, you probably do not expect it from Dice. Yeah, of all yeah that's true. Dice wouldn't BM anyone. He's too nice. He's going to have to start one day. Once the edges get too thin, he's gonna have to grab like latch onto everything. Well, G2 has RDU to BM people. Yeah, that's right. Life coach is there to keep RDU in check. Ties doesn't need any policing, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Let Ties do his thing. Unless you view life coach as BMing people because he ropes every turn. <laughs> who knows? Maybe he's just been kind of building up this facade of this <laughs> nice guy who overthinks, but in fact he's just like, you know what, I don't need to. never mind. Oh, so six, BM. seven, eight, nine, there's ten. Uh, you need to from lose that note. I mean, it doesn't matter. You win next turn, right? Like, well, it's easy to kill well. the four two, but then like Sylvanas, uh, if you get Force of Nature, you're still alive. Savagery, you're alive. Like, yeah, it looks good if you leave Sylvanas alone. And there might not be a way to, to kill Sylvanas. Oh, Graves! So, yes, oh my they, God, they Soul do play Soulfire. Wait, now <laughs> we have it. Oh yeah, done. Okay. Well, I and, guess that and works. Dark bomb. And Dark Bomb, sure, why not? Wow. That's oh the list God. I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decks yeah. that play Dark Bombs, that play Soulfire. There's this, it's a very aggressive Zoo list that somehow came up recently. I want to call it Aggro Lock instead, but it's got so many mid-range cards that I just don't know what it is exactly. It's the, so we talked about Zoo before, and we never mentioned this version, because there's like Sea Giant, there's the Bran Dark Iron Dwarf, right. and the 
the aggressive one with Argent Squires that we've seen. I think this is the fourth build. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I actually agree with you, Nox, as well. Like, even calling this Zoo is is interesting because, yes, it's 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 an aggressive warlock list, but Zoo is more based around like sticky minions that can trade up a lot right. and uh, and just stick on the board. Whereas I'm pretty sure there were no eggs in that deck. We, we didn't no, see no, eggs. No, no, we no haven't eggs. seen any. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's it's, no space. So, yeah, exactly. There's no eggs. We didn't see any creepers either. It's so it's really just swapping those cards out and just being more aggressive overall, like you said. And those uh, as your drakes really help with that. The big question is, is, is this list better versus Druid? It might be because there's the Shredder, Azure Drake, Belcher. And you never tap. Druid. Like, you tap a lot less, I find, in this yeah. list. Yeah. And your top decks are more likely to find you immediate lethals, given that you play Dark Bombs and... Uh, yeah, actual burn in, in your hand, right. rather than, like, yeah. POR abusive, which is the only... So it might be, it might be, in a way. Like, we were always talking, like, the currently Zoo, even though it has slight edge, it's not the, the same advantage it had in the past. Maybe Kamlan actually brings the different breed of Zoo that has a good matchup versus Druid. And we've seen that that seemed close, that there would be combo from, uh, from Tice, but uh, it was a good win for Kamlan. And right now we will have a mirror match, Zoo versus Zoo, where Thais, I think, is playing the Giants version. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it, but he I played it before at BGL tournaments. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Thais must be a bit disappointed that his trademark class lost a match in the last <laughs> hero standing format. It's one of those very unfortunate things. It's now that he can't play Druid and he still has to face off against one. It's really painful. Yeah, definitely a match that you, you don't really want to lose. Looking at Kamala's open hand, though, it's not fantastic. Um, as you normally need the, the, the quicker opening in a, not a, a, a exact mirror match, um, no matter what the overlay just looked like then with two uh, two Warlocks, but still, um, you definitely want the early game to, to combat the Zoo's board control. And yeah, definitely. Uh, Thais has like, an incredible hand. Yeah, double Peddler, I mean, I I think here you definitely want to coin the Peddler out, because it stops the uh, for a potential Flame Imp, or at least trades with a Flame Imp pretty well. Yeah, it's not bad, and you also get a card that can help. It's just you. more options for turn two, right? Like even if you get like a Stuntas Boar. You have an Archer, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, too. It's like, it's actually more options for turn two because he has a one drop guaranteed next turn. Or he can, if he really wants, depending on what the board looks like, just play the other uh, Dark Peddler and just have a flurry of one drops in his hand. So this opens up the opportunity of trading up uh, into something with the Voidwalker while still coining out the Peddler yep. or playing Peddler, then coining out whatever one drop you get, if it's good enough. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, as Raven said, like this uh, Zoo versus Zoo is all about the early battle. Uh, whoever gets the minions and who, whoever gets um, edge on board is going to win the match because there's not that many uh, comeback mechanisms. Even though Kamlan is playing a bit of a different version, uh, he, he, we haven't seen any AOEs from him. Um, have we seen Implosion? Like he has to play. We him. have seen Implosion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think. Uh, I think one of the, the interesting interactions that will come up maybe later on is the addition of dart bombs in Kamlin's deck because it's more removal that a standard zoo list doesn't really have. Uh, they normally just rely on minions to trade up or, or an implosion or something, you know, like get off the odd implosion or two there. But I think it'll be interesting to just dart bomb to just straight up remove these smaller minions and not have to worry about them. Absolutely. But for now, Dice is just uh, super ahead and getting flame in from Dark Peddler as yeah. well. Just this board is so good in zoo versus zoo battles. Yeah. And he's got the insurance with the Abusive Sergeant that he can trade up into something like uh, Imp Gang Boss if it were to come out. Yeah. yeah. There's that Dark Bomb, but I think actually uh, it's... This might be a forced Dark Bomb. And, you know, you play Abusive for tempo, and then either you lose it to the Voidwalker, and then you implosion, say, the Peddler, and you get one ones to contest that yeah. Voidwalker, or you end up playing the Imp Gang Boss, losing it probably in the process and doing nothing. What about just going... Yeah, like, Imp Gang Boss... It might work. work. It can work, yeah. I think Im yeah, I think Imbagang boss is okay, uh, because if your opponent's then trading in in terms of, uh, say, an abusive and then trading the Void Walker into the 1-1 one -one that spawns, right. then you've just slowed him down quite a lot. And he's, you know, he's not really pushing any face damage there. And he can still follow up with him, his own impl his implosion like afterwards. Yeah, also like the fact that you are, in a way, with Imbagang boss, you're forcing a buff. Like, you, you want Thais to... Yeah, if Thais has, like, an abusive then Implosion will trade really well versus Abusive in the future. Yeah, and also if Tice ignores the Imp Gang Boss because he just chooses to believe it's too much of a you know, too much of a big deal and he just like can just ignore it because he has the taunt. Yeah, it looks okay, like he's going to go for that line of play and hope that it works out. I mean, Tice has more than enough options here. To dark Peddler, though? Is that the Dark Peddler turn? It Pick up a Coil? Oh yeah. yeah, Archer. Stone Dust Boar. <laughs> we keep laughing about the Stone Dust Boar, but you just... Yeah. Oh! <laughs> 
Oh, boy. Got him. We called it. There we go. Do you still go for it? I think you can. Of course, yes. It's, it's more Why damage not? protected. Here, Why not? <laughs> it's perfect. You keep it's the board. There's nothing to clean up yours. You're good to go. You got an implosion turn afterwards. It's hard to say no. To a stone house board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sees more play in uh, Peddler than in Hunter. And yeah. You take it. Nice. It's a Warlock. Oh, that pig. Well, it looks like... Uh, Kamlan's gonna have to review his game plan. It sounds like his game plan involves a lot of imps. A lot of implosions that hit for four. Yeah, actually, the second implosion is pretty big because uh, traditional Zulis didn't really have a way to deal with multiple minions oh. that well other than straight up trades. Right. So the second implosion just filling up the board, and then uh, Kamlan can use the power of overwhelming, maybe silence off a buff target, and then really just start trading away the board. Because when he then starts to drop minions like Sludge Belcher, he sort of has the advantage in, in the mid to late game, I feel. Absolutely. Unless, like, uh, there isn't Implosion from Dice that uh, hits. That is more. well read. Oh! Wow. <laughs> and here you thought you had the game. Yeah, and suddenly Power of Overwhelming, still a dead card. Good here. card there. Coil in the deck, not off of a peddler for Kamlan. Yeah, it's a really interesting list, and this coil is actually quite good this turn. Does he reply with Coil and then his other implosion? <laughs> Should be like imps everywhere. There is Defender of Argus, and there is one. How bad it is for you. I'd love to see a Hellfire in that list. <laughs> yeah, these one of right. I bet Camelon would as well. I mean, the thing is, it, it's <laughs> one of those. No, it's one of those cards that like it just doesn't see much play. But there was a point where, yeah, where you Zoo take it. ran the Hellfire, and I feel like this list with the amount of spells it's got could probably use a single copy of it if it wanted. I think Belcher here, uh, by the way, is like this turn also a valid yeah. play. If implosion, if you just implosion for two, I think. It's almost over for you. No, I actually think the uh, the Im Gang Boss Mortal Coil might be the best here. Coil off a 2-1, put the Im Gang Boss down, and without one -one. buffed minions, these do not trade into Im Gang Boss at all, because you just will generate a board just as big. He does go for the Belcher, though. Yeah, I like Belcher because... Uh, it seems really weak to Power Overwhelming. It is weak to Power Overwhelming, but at this point, like you're in such a bad position that you have to make a gamble that there is that something has not been drawn. And uh, PO, I, I guess there was a, a, a chance to have a PO before. Uh, but Defender of Argus would absolutely destroy you, especially if you implosion only for two. Right. If the, if the roll is low, I think you lose the game, which is why Imgang Boss felt a lot more appealing. Yeah, Imgang Boss was okay as well, but then uh, Belcher is also like stopping some damage to face and forcing a specific board. Uh, we'll see what Kamlan can come up with on the next turn, because again, Tyus has taken the early lead with the double pillar opener. And I feel like that alone is already super difficult. Yeah, to and what's funny is could be, even though the decks are, are quite different in terms of what, what they can do, as we said earlier, Camelon's version still doesn't seem to run any AOE, and this is this remove the different styles, Zoo versus Zoo. This is how you lose. Right. right? You, you know your opponent builds a board, and you just you just lose because you cannot answer it. There's no board sweep in the yeah. deck, and you just you, you could play whatever minion you want, and they're still just going to power through because they're always a turn ahead on that board control. Yeah. So this turn you start with Coil, try to uh, draw that Shadow Flame. There's uh... Soulfire does very little. You can still play it after implosion, I guess, and uh, deal with the two free. So yeah. I imagine that I might actually be your your best bet. Honestly. Really, I I think I'd in, in, in gang boss peddler now. Yeah. You just need that in gang boss down because it's the only thing that's going to battle back for the board. Uh, you or need an implosion, implosion of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh. that's it. So he still has a chance, but well, what's he throw? The owl. Okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. yeah, that's actually okay. <laughs> Surprisingly fine. It's been sitting in his hand for a long time now and hasn't seen any use. <laughs> Not that it wouldn't now, but... It Although a Void Caller <laughs> comes into the hand, typical. Oh, the Void Caller's like, oh, what was that? The Owl went? Okay, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll come in. Again. <laughs> Somebody calls. Get me in, beckons. coach. <laughs> Get me in. <laughs> like, normally, Owl is actually really good in this matchup because you silence the Ruben Egg or you silence the Jaguar, yeah, right. so you have a good answer. But that Owl is just sitting there and doing nothing. So what do you do now? You can, um, you can actually juggler. Juggler into Void Caller. Not bad. I like it. Yep. And I think... Uh, it, Regardless of what happens, I wouldn't even mind him trading all his, all his three minions into these imps. Yeah, because like if you, you just keep the board empty, there's nothing the other guy can do, the other zoo player can do about it. Or yeah, the warlock player. You can put pressure. I mean, you've got five damage to face, and you're putting down two more minions that both will work off of juggler, doom guard next turn. It's kind of hard to like justify trading when you're so far ahead, right? Yeah, I yeah. suppose with because the, the minions are two attack, that's fine. 
I don't know, I just really like emptying the board because then nothing crazy can happen. Nothing like power overwhelming or any abuses right. or any of these big trade up potentials that uh, Warlock oh. has. Yeah, but this is a different version of Zudo. Like, there are shredders and like uh, cards you haven't seen before. So maybe. Yeah, I still just mean like there's, there's still always going to be power overwhelming and abusive sergeant in the deck, that's all. So I have a question. Once the new set comes out and you've got Tentacle of Nazoth as a one drop, in a wild, the implosion plays might be a lot weaker because Peddler is able to just wipe out a board full of one health minions. Like a whirlwind effect for Peddler. You will be one of the few people playing wild, I'm sure. It's fun, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be fun, definitely. If you if you want to play a bit of Secret Paladin and you've missed like basic Elven Archer, I want to play Elven Archer. Elven Archer? Yep. It will work with the with the tentacle. Yep. Just you, the you tentacle just Elven it. Archer. Oh Wipe the board. Double Peddler. You can play Whirlwind as a warrior, you know. Like it, it's a really good card. It deals one damage to the board. Or, or I can damage. just play that new Warlock card and become a warrior. It's easier that way. Now yeah, I true. feel like picking up the PO. Uh, is him trying to get a trade? Like later on with the abusive yep. PO on the same turn on the Doomguard? Interesting. Seems so flimsy, but it, it's probably the only way he's got uh, of even coming back in this game. Yeah, so Voidwork is actually pretty nice here as well. Oh, does PO change anything? Uh, no, not really. Doesn't not this too much. Yeah, like Tice is still ahead. Well, but you no, might with the, the, the Hunt Creeper popping, right, at the end of the turn? Would you want well, you can still just like kill the Yeah, I, I like this. Yeah, this kill the Imperium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By a long shot. No need for PO. No. <laughs> well, let's no, not go complete stupid shit. mode. Yeah, it's a really good situation for, for Kai. It's like, again, full board. Um, oh, he even gets the last jungle as well. Is there a chance for a Shadow Flame? Nope. Can not here. There we and go. Kalman concedes this game, so ties, um, ties the series. We have to assume that there is no, uh, there's no Hellfire, there's no Shadow Flame again in the deck at all. Otherwise, he would have at least life tap to find the, yeah. the card had it been in there. He had so many new cards. Well, new cards, new cards in the Zulus that uh, I doubt there was any AOE right at this point. But we'll not see the deck anymore. It's it's uh, defeated, and uh, Ice is going to stay with his Zulus. So what do you bring now, uh, being Kamlan? You mentioned there's Druid. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, this is a more standard Zula, so Druid is not as bad as it used to be um, against that type of zoo. The alternative would be, I think, the uh, Warrior, but that can struggle if it's not... Well, it is Patron, never mind. Yeah, it's pretty... I was going to say, if it's not Patron, turns out it is, so... It's yeah. Patron, so it's a good matchup for yeah. Patron. I like it. So, Raven, why is it a good matchup? Yeah, so basically... <laughs> Patron has a, the, the weapons are just so key in this matchup uh, in terms of uh, your know, death bike can, is really good at clearing up in gang boss or after any implosions with the whirlwind effect. Even Fire War Axe on turn two can just deal with almost any minions they're going to drop. And from that point on, the second you get patrons down, they pretty much trade with any minion that the zoo player is going to drop and then complete, uh, continue to just regenerate and air duplicate. So other than, and even if he's, uh, even if this was the Sea Giants version, and it still applies with things like if there's Malganis in this deck, because we did see the Void Caller, yeah. the easy answer of executes onto the big targets, right. uh, it just makes, it, makes the matchup so favored for the, uh, for the Warrior player. And that's yes. a great hand for him. Yeah. So what Zoo has to do basically is to threaten uh, from the very beginning, be really aggressive, and whenever the patron turn happens, we have many oh. board that can kill the patrons, and then push even more damage, and also ask the questions: Do you have execute? Do you have a second execute? Yeah. And the moment the, the warrior doesn't have removal, Zoo will be able to take control of the board. But, but also the moment the uh, the Zoo player has an opening hand like this, it gets a little bit rough. Yeah, it's good stuff unless he gets uh, void get colored. Void color. Right. Yeah. This is the type of hand that looks very bad, and it is. But it doesn't take much for Zoo to come back in with a hand like that one, right? Like, at turn three, you still don't have anything anyway. So if you pick up even an abusive to deal some more damage, play the egg with it, your turn four could be a pickup of a Void Caller, a defend of Argus on a leftover yeah. minion. But as we can see from Camelon, like, his opening hand is insane. He right. has a Shredder, he has the, uh, the Death Bite. Slam. <laughs> the, he, now he has Slam, oh my god. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and man. then, like, Death oh. Bite into a... Uh, into the car size, amazing. Dice nope. is like, no, this was my only threat. There we go. Picks up a curve for now. That, he needs to continue doing that. All right, pick, up, pick up that Defend of Argus, pick up that Void Caller. Actually, like, this into Defend of Argus, Lothab into It's Doom insane. Six. It is insane. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. good. Okay. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> sure. I'm going to let you two have that one. Um, but I think Camelon's still looking pretty damn good here. 
Yeah, but what do you do this turn? Do you just that death spite? And DK? Corsair? Yeah, I think I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like my free 3 3. Thank you, Nimsh. <laughs> but he doesn't even have to. I'll take that. it. <laughs> You can bluff and think about things. Uh, so what, what he could do as well is he could actually just coin out the Shredder. Although it does trade straight in from the Imp, and then there's a potential you know, buff from the Egg to create the 4-4, then you just Death Bite, then the Ruby and Egg down. I kind of like... We'll never Shredder here. No, I, I would play the Death Bite just because your health goes down. And if there's something like a PO on the Egg to kill a Corsair, then you can play the Frothing. Second charge of the Axe pops, you have yeah. two health, like two minions damage. Yeah. Two characters, then you draw two cards. And also, you have double death spite, so you won't start using. Yeah, them. yeah. I think there's the second one as well. Yeah. yeah. This isn't like guaranteed. He doesn't even have patron in hand, so it's not like coining it early and forcing his second attack on turn four is going to be bad for him. Uh, and as you said, he does have the second one ready to go. Okay, so he's not playing Corsair because of the. Wow. Okay. Look at that. Yeah, this is it, awesome. It, it, <laughs> see, this is where the game might just turn uh, for Tice if he keeps picking up cards that do something. Yeah. It also worked for him that the Corsair is not being played. Right. For Dice, it's like, fine, no free-free. It's OK. I didn't have a way to deal with it anyway. So the Whirlwind effect will go off before the um, before the Demon's pulled, which is actually really important. Yeah. Because in terms of holding the Corsair, it's because he had Battle Rage. So you guarantee a two-draw two, two draw Battle Rage. If he plays Corsair, then yeah. attacks. If the weapon was down afterwards, then he could have attacked. The Whirlwind effect hits whatever Demon pulls out, and he could Battle Rage into Execute which would be huge. But he's not going to get that opportunity, and he's not drawn a whirlwind or anything either, so this could be a little bit rough. We might even... How insane would it be if he overrode his death bite with the new one and try to get the AoE from that second one to kill the demon that gets pulled out? That would be pretty reasonable. How, how insane would it be if he pulled out that one? Too insane. Like, you see the Void Caller, do you kill it? There's only three cards in hand. I might play Shredder, right? Like, this might be a good turn for that Shredder you mentioned yeah. earlier. Let the opponent... Because the problem is, without a guaranteed way to kill whatever comes out of the Voidwalker, you're almost giving the minion charge, right? Yep. Whereas if you play Shredder and let him trade the Voidwalker into it if he wants to, then, you know, unless it does have charge, like the Doomguard we can see, then, you know, if Marganis comes out, you have another turn to try and do something about it. Yeah, but I like leaving it up. It's only there, three damage. There's also an argument about, like, killing it now because the next, like, Warlock has only three cards. And uh, Warlock normally plays a lot of demons. There's a, a, a gang boss and never flame him. So there is a possibility there is no demon in hand or a small demon. And you force that small demon right now. And if you if you give Warlock a turn, he can life tap, he can play the small demon and then get even more value from the Void Caller. So I, I'm not saying it's correct to attack into the Void Caller. You still got to think about it. Yeah, you yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. need to consider it. Yeah, I like this though, because you present a really nice target to, to kill the first half of the um, of the Shredder. And then the idea is if there's like an abusive or something for the egg to go into the second part of the Shredder to maybe clear it off and pop the egg. And it feels really good. And you always want to go for this. Because um, also, if he gets... Oh, OK, he's got... Tice is scared of I was wondering if he got the Malganis and he just plays Doomguard yeah. with the Malganis buff and be like, yep, all, all in, all yeah. in. Even if there is a Doomsayer, you can just kill it with a Doomguard attack. Yeah. Well, now you can't. Hmm. But it's not it, a that, that was a bit risky. <laughs> um, but I mean, ultimately, what he was looking for is wow, okay, that's a battle rage. Yeah. No, it's really, not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good battle rage, but he needs to get an execute. I just want to point it out the Malganis dies to this poor little 3 4. Yep. That's it. It's a bit sad. I mean, you can literally play double Corsair, frothing, trade, trade. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can. Yeah. You have a good battle rage. Yeah, next yeah. Turn, it's quite, it's quite all right. Yeah. It's perfect. And th this was the whole thing of not attacking the Void Walker, uh, Void Caller, sorry, last turn. Because now, like, Malganis, other than currently making the Warlock immune and now forcing you to trade into it, actually has not really done anything. Yeah. It's not a huge impact, which is why I wouldn't have minded the trade first. And then you could just go all in on Doomguard and make your opponent have like double execute in hand. I mean, that would have been very all in and probably yeah. too but risky. This keeps your Malganis safe from execute no matter what, right? Yeah. Because Lothab blocks execute. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Do you do you really go for frauding? I guess you do because it's like yeah. Why not? The best protected, board. right? Yeah, you have there's two taunts. Yeah, yeah, but I'm protected. thinking like you can actually pick up execute with the battle. Oh, you can't no, battle. You can't. There's like Lothab. Lothab. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. He can't even battle rage. He's breaking Lothab. You Whoa. can't do anything. This is kind of interesting. He didn't actually kill the Malganis. Yeah, he's like, I can execute you later on. I'd rather not take a billion damage, but I still feel like that's the play I would have made most of the time. Yeah, you just remove it straight away after. Yeah, it makes okay. sense to kill Mulganis there. 
Okay, so we're not seeing the Doom Guard this turn, that's for sure. And the interesting thing as well is that it lets you keep that Totem Golem for future value, right? So yeah. you can use it for well, the Rage card draw, and, for and the more Axe. And also, yeah, th this gives him like a gigantic Battle Rage. And also, if the Malganis goes into the Taunt, well, the Totem Golem can clear it up anyway. Sure. You know, so it's it does the same job, just a turn later, but potentially has a few more benefits. So really nice play, actually, from Kamen. Love that. So picks up another two drop to curve in nicely. He's gonna try to get himself probably a uh, Yo, like abusive. A soul fire. Flame him. Flame him. Why not? You're not gonna yeah. get hurt. You're not getting damage there. I love there. that. But you have to play it now, which means you don't play Creeper. Yeah, but Flame him is still better, I think, than a Creeper. It is a 5-4 for yeah. the time being. <laughs> yeah, for now. <laughs> well, Gannis is going down. Oh my god, this frothing Berserker, though. What? Oh my god, what if he battle rages into Whirlwind? Uh, this could be... Um, honestly, uh, there's a chance that this game ends like... Next turn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a very slight chance. It's with bugs. He's Yeah, and there's four card draws. This is rage. ridiculous. And he's going to rage. rage. Oh All you need God. now is an execute to start things off. Oh, Ty Tice has just gone. Okay, so there's double in a rage. Uh, he's good. He's good. Okay. He's good. Wait. Like Morgana, Morgana only has three health. Yeah, he, it does. So then it buffs the frotting again to 14. And then with double inner rage, it's uh, 20. It's 23. Can you get four damage somewhere? The axe. Yeah, the, the I guess axe is good. Yeah, axe does it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that card that I, does I it guess is that's good. I can spot lethal. I spot lethal here. Can Kamlan spot that lethal? Yep. Death bite seems reasonable. Yeah, it looks like uh, 27 health is pretty easy to go through, apparently. I'm correct, right? Yeah, you're correct. It's exactly 27. Yeah. Nice. And Cameron, nice job, more Nish. than likely, is going to spot this. Plus one caster points. <laughs> <laughs> You're now on one total caster point. <laughs> nice. Uh, let, let Come me on, Please spot it. We see the lethal. You have seven. Yeah, I think. Yeah. As plus, soon as he's yeah, playing the other range. He was triple checking. Now he's going to trade into the flame him. No. <laughs> if it was a Wrath Guard, though, that's a lot of yeah. swag points. Wow, that kill. Wow. And uh, Tice right impressive. now regretting everything he's ever gone through. <laughs> but oh. still, like, from that hand, that was really close overall in the, in the way that it, yeah. he got the Malganis and then Doomguard as well. No execute, so it could have gone very differently. If that Peddler had picked up a Soul Fire and the, you know, Tice had decided to just go ahead and kill the Frothing before anything went wrong, it may have been different. Yeah. Also, the uh, the three attack minion in the form of the Totem Golem coming out from the Shredder was actually pretty huge. That's definitely one of the best minions you can get. And, you know, the, the attack was just enough, actually, to because he got exact lethal there, so he had to have three damage from Alganis. Yeah. And that if he didn't have that trade, then it, he couldn't have lethaled him that turn. So Absolutely. That pretty, pretty massive. If any other, like, lower attack minion came out, it would have been a lot more... Oh. I'm not trouble, but the game would have continued. I'm getting more and more impressed by Kamlan's play. Like, not only he brought a, a very interesting build of Zoo, but uh, with this patron, he also played really well. Yeah, I feel like the line of play that he took with that Totem Golem coming out, uh, you know, I I was talking about trading with the weapon in Malganus yeah. right away, getting out of the board, but the fact that he damaged it, got himself a bit more mileage out of that 2-drop, made the game what it was. Otherwise, there was no way to really but get that least. Battle that Rage spot. just... What, you know, the, again, that right. huge battle rage off was key, and now Cameron's going to go into a matchup. He's got, probably going to be feeling pretty confident about. He has Patron Warrior versus Secret Piled in, and Patron Warrior very similar to, to the way it works versus Zoo. The reason it's good is there's a lot of whirlwind effects, a lot of early removal to stop the piled in snowballing, and then again, once you get patrons on the board. Um, and if you get them on on turn five, which is like the natural patron turn or the perfect patron turn, before the mysterious challenger comes down, then the, the warrior can just run away with the game because the paladin can't accrue in enough board after that. Yeah, absolutely. But the same strategy for paladin as I'm scared here for uh, Kamlin, right? Yeah, with the, with the secret keeper opening into Avenge or like... Maybe just coin minibot into secret keeper Avenge. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Because then you're just not... Good lord. Yeah, you're not weak to the fire war axe I'm as scared. well. And because... No matter what secret is played, if, you, if you're the warrior and you have Fire War Axe, you're always going to equip it and attack and try and kill the secret keeper, right? Yeah, you, you like expect noble sacrifice. If it's get down, then like fine. You know, like, you just deal with it. But you always try. So I like uh, coining the minibot out here, too, because it's much safer. And then you're almost guaranteeing a vengeance for the turn after. Definitely. And this is what you have to do as a paladin, just, like, threaten warrior from the very beginning of the game and, and continue on curve to push and to ask questions, do you have an answer? But uh, there is a Corsair pickup, which is quite nice overall. Uh, yeah, it'll give him a turn three that is not frothing if he opts for that. It depends really what he gets as a follow-up. Um, I just feel like 
Number one, you don't like Fiery War Axe versus Minibot, but it's also a bit too slow, right? You'd like this turn to be delayed by one notch. Yeah. Uh, if this Minibot would be played on two, you're a bit happier. Yeah, and uh, the decision now for Camelon is whether he... I think he's going to equip the Fiery War Axe because it's just too much tempo not to. Uh, and it gives him an easy run into the death bite later on. And um, it's just whether he chooses to attack into the Divine Shield or not, but I think he almost has to. There was like small arguments to maybe not play Fireworks this turn and to conceal the Fireworks and the next turn just play Fireworks into Corsair. I like that. It would have been a play that still curved you out the same way. Would it though? Because then I mean, you'd, have, you'd have the charge of the Fire War Axe on turn four, so you'd overwrite the War Axe with the Death Bite nine times out of ten, right? Yeah, so most then you of lose them. a charge. So I like just get the War Axe on. Yeah, I like, he I like has it for next turn. Too, but yeah. just like you can think about it if it's actually good yeah. for you. Overall, obviously, playing War Axe was a bit better there. Now, another interesting decision to make number one, what is that secret? I don't want to get a redemption on the mini bot, so I will try to kill the Secret Keeper. It's probably not redemption. Yeah, I actually like uh, the froth in here, yep. um, because if you kill the secret keeper and it's avenged, the mini bot dies to the. Uh, uh, well, no. Oh no, it doesn't quite die oh, to the froth. No, but you can kill it off the following turn. Sorry. Yep. All right. But, but the, the mini bot's almost forced to trade into the froth in. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Because you can't really. Oh, leave oh right. man! Oh, look at this. You can just draw the cog hammer. I just wanted okay, to mention so, that oh Tyson is missing f uh, free drop, but this. Uh. So I have a question. You have two choices here. Either you play around execute, or you play around death bite. If you play the cog hammer first, you go face with the damage, right? Yeah. Okay, so he did not go face with I, the damage. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little surprised, but yeah, I guess. No, I, I like the trade, and, and the I think playing around execute is is better because if he has death bite, well, he takes another five, right? He takes five to the face. Whereas if he has execute, it's one mana gone. But what, what if you went face here, with the five four? With the 5 4? And what, leave the Froth in alive? Doesn't it have to attack into the. Well, if there is a Whirlwind execute, you're, you're <laughs> just. Whirlwind plus Whirlwind plus execute? Uh, Inner Rage, maybe? Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. yeah. Okay, I guess there's like a chance that you just get blown out completely. So I, I, I like that play because you just remove a Froth in still, yeah, but, you know, sense. open up a big target for the Warrior to deal with. Yeah, he had Death Bite and he had a good follow up with Corsair as well. I, like but I, do, I, I do agree with Noxious that it's good considering. That, yeah. that play as well because uh, you are pushing Warrior and uh, at the moment Warrior is 17. But now the problem is, and this is something we saw actually happen a lot in the EU Championship where Paladin can push quite hard early on sometimes and then just run out of juice. And uh, we see now that the, uh, the, the juggler is going to come down with the juggler. He's probably hoping he hits that 3 2, uh, 3 3, misses. Whoops. And now. Doesn't do, have. Do you, just, do you just have to tank this? You kind of have to. I mean, the AOE will finish it off. Yeah, exactly. So it just forces a trade into probably the uh, the juggler at this point. Yeah, but uh, it's still a fine trade. Like you don't have to use your weapon at all. You can just the, kill yeah. the juggler and slam Lotha and be like, exactly. pass. Exactly. This is looking father. really good for Camelon because even that, t you know, this board's gonna get cleared up. Uh, he could oh just pass. Yeah. Just Actually, I think this is good in a way because this gives uh, this would normally give Dice an option to play um, Blessing of King. Yeah, but the low step defense like yeah, guards yeah, yeah. him from that. So, like it was unfortunate for Dice because I think attacking into the minion was quite good because then like you really force the trade into the free two and protect your one one in the process. If you do not attack passively, Death Spite will actually kill the the juggler and the one one. Yeah. yeah I think Kalman is playing a very good uh, patient warrior. Honestly, so far it's been. When, like for for a player that you don't hear about too much, I've I know the name, yeah, yeah. having seen him play, but I don't think it's a name you see too much around. I I think what's re what's really good now is like his follow up is actually really strong, because again he can just drop a froth in, right, and say answer it, and he's probably going to clear this board because he's going to drop a froth in down. So it's really really nice. Probably go into the um. The, the thing is, from his perspective, challenger is an issue. Like we we're talking, knowing the hands, everything's kind of visible, but I think from. Uh, Kalman's perspective, he's thinking, what about that Frothing Berserker? Like, what do I, uh, I mean, the Challenger. Yeah. What and do Challenger I do against comes. that, right? Like, yeah, but I think with this hand he's actually got, there's not a lot he can do, so he's probably just not too fussed. Uh, you, you know, if it, like if it happens, he has option. to deal with it, but at the, at unless, you know, depending on what he draws next, of course, like, it looks like he should just go for the Frothing regardless, as it's just too good. Well, there we go. Now, the Acolyte changes things, because he can get additional card draw and still clear the board. Yeah, just so play both actually. Yeah, just play both. Just like, drop both. Uh, run the. I would actually run the Lothab into the two two. Uh, and just empty just the board. I would inner rage it and take damage, maybe. Would you? I don't all, know. all I'm thinking is the, the inner rage can be really useful afterwards for another acolyte. 
Yeah. True. Uh, I know he has two, but do we, what you want to do is you empty the board for turn six. You do not want a Mysterious Challenger on the board with other minions. You want Correct. it on its own so you can then just easily deal with it um, afterwards with like a, you know, like one minion attack and you don't have to worry about all and the buffs. Three health, yeah. Absolutely. Three. Yeah. Um, is it playing around Consecration a bit? Yeah, it is because the Lothev stays at uh, a three. Uh, I mean, it takes one damage from the Dead's Bite when you play this, but if you don't trade, if you use the Inner Rages instead, then it would actually stay alive. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I think this is fine, though, because if he Consecrates, he's doing not a lot else, and he has to face tank this uh, Frosting Berserker yeah, <laughs> with the weapon. So he's probably like, okay, Consecrate me. He draws a card. It's most of his turn, so then his follow-up's probably Hero Power. And he has to face tank 10 damage first, which seems okay. Oh, but man. I would still, I, I think if the Consecration was here, uh, Tice might be able to come back in this game. Oh yeah, I'm not saying if it's face like, tank, the yeah, it's definitely a, a, one of his better options. It just still feels okay for Camlin. He didn't really have to play round Consecration. Is, Ouch. Is that it? Is that it? Slam, if, execute, if you go, trade. You inner rage the 3 5, then you execute it, then you slam the 1 2. No, no. No, no, you'd slam <laughs> the 3 5, execute, run the 3 1 into right. the. Uh, yeah, but you can go 3 to face as well. Uh, yeah, but you gain 2 from the trade anyway, right? And, you, and you'd gain oh, plus yeah, 2 sense. from the inner rage from the. Uh, instead of using it on the minion, you gain plus 2 and the plus 1 from damaging the Frothing Berserker. I'm not saying I'm doing the math and working out where this is lethal, but... Uh, well, now you it, basically can uh, battle rage. He's one off, I think. He needs to pick up one more damage. Well, he can, he can definitely battle rage, because he still has the mana. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, that should be it. Oh, wh well, when... You use it on the frothing alone, and it's good enough. Yeah, second oh. execute as well. Should be enough. We can win now, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cross it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely enough. So again, with the frothing, and this means that Scamlin is actually taking the series of 3 to 1. Those frosting Tice. Berserker finishes. I mean, Tice is going to have nightmares about those guys. Wow. And, and Kamlin advances to the top 8. He advances to tomorrow. So we had three members of Team Flow actually uh, coming into the day, advancing for the Swiss. And now Kamlin, the only one from Team Flow, um, defeating the, the European champion and playing excellent. Yeah, and the guys there just having a quick chat about the game because those were some of the crazier games we've seen as right. well. Like they were, it's not often frothing berserkers do actually keep hitting for that much. And uh, but also to, to Camlin, like really solid play actually. It's the first time we've seen him on stream, I believe. Yeah. Um, and a really, really solid play overall. And taking down Tice is nothing to be sniffed at. Yeah, Lothar must be a bit sad though because the only uh, the only one of his guys still contending for this is Life Coach. Actually, Tice is not eliminated yet. Tice is going to face Sixo in the last match of the day. And oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. There's another game. loser's match. There's a chance that he comes back from this. Yeah. That's right.